of battle. Trust. Camaraderie. And friendship. Here we are, old bean. Our final night. How long have we been defending this foxhole for? It must be months and months without even a taste of home. Well, I'm aware, Private, that I reported the pantry empty, bare. But I saw fit in case of such a situation as tonight to keep to myself some tobacco. And private, now I consider you friend. And so I ask of you if you would care to join me for one final smoke before we go over the top. Here. Weeks old, dry as a bone, but a little taste of home. Please, allow me officer's privilege. such as this, when they come in, cannot be questioned. But I wanted to remind you that what you are doing, why you are here on this earth, is of importance. We battle daily, not wars in land, not wars between men, not wars for country. Every person has a battle that they must fight. Win or lose, it must be fought. You and I didn't have much of a choice in our fight, but we have a choice to maintain dignity, to keep a stiff upper lip, and to honor those who we are fighting for. Now, private. I asked you how long we've been defending this foxhole of a trench. And it has indeed been months and months. And I would encourage you, if you are a person of faith, to pray. I would also encourage you, if you are not a person of faith, we find many a time that there are few non-believers in foxholes. If you 
cannot pray for yourself, then pray for others. Pray for those you love. Pray for those who you are going to save through your bravery. For you are a hero. <laughs> it sounds almost like bathos to say it out loud. <laughs> but we are all heroes. And we are martyrs. We are martyrs for the hope that such a thing will never be repeated again. <laughs> I'm aware that you lot aren't particularly fond of my words and my fondness for the language that we speak. And I'm aware that some of you have said one or two rather nasty things about me behind my back. Well, all is forgiven, private, of course. But I was wondering if you would um, humour me one last time before we hop over. Before we take a shallow leap into a very, very deep sea. Thank you. I have um, composed a poem. <laughs> I know. No one is particularly fond of my works, but let me find one for you. Ah. I think this will do the job. Would you mind? Till on the haunting flares we turned our backs, and towards our distant rest began to trudge. Men marched asleep, many had lost their boots, but limped on bloodshot, all went lame, all blind, drunk with fatigue, deaf even to the hoots of gas shells dropping softly behind. Gas, gas, quick boys, an ecstasy of fumbling fitting the clumsy helmets just in time. But someone still yelling, out and stumbling, and floundering like a man in fire or lime, dim through the misty panes and thick green light, as under a green sea I saw him drowning. In all my dreams before my helpless sight, he plunges at me, guttering, choking, drowning. If in some smothering dreams you too could pace behind the wagon that we flung him in and watch the white eyes writhing in his face, his hanging face like a devil sick of sin. If you could hear at every jolt the blood come gargling from the froth-corrupted lungs, obscene as cancer, bitter as the cud of vile incurable sores on innocent tongues. My friend, you would not tell me, with such high zest, to children ardent for some desperate glory, the old lie, dulce et decorum est, pro patria. Maury. Thank you <clears throat> for listening, Private. I appreciate it is not to everyone's taste. True, this life that has been forced upon us is not to mine. Alas, I can offer you little comfort 
in such a time, but perhaps some Dutch courage will inspire you. What do you say? <clears throat> By Jove. Please, private. Well, that should soften my blows, a little at least. Private, what may I call you, friend? Before we go over, before it ends, I would ask of you this, that, should you make it, deliver upon my poems to my family and friends to leave these fields and to begin anew would be to cultivate a garden and watch it bloom but here we are stuck in the mud covered in blood far far away from those who we love You've been a good friend, Private, and it should please me greatly that these final moments were spent with you. We shall dream of England's shores before the order comes through, that final push. Have we but held the line for such a long time, but here we are, to push and go forth, and one day, <laughs> one day, private, we shall greet our enemy as friends, and there will be no ranks, you will not walk behind me, and I will not walk in front of you. We will walk together and call each other friend. Now, I must see to my ablutions and ensure that we are stocked. For once we move forth, there is no coming back. I'd be a good chap and go make sure everyone's awake. We go over the top at dawn's break.